a little bit on aerodynamic damping today. Um, so first, what it is and, and why it happens, and later we'll, we'll see an example, we'll illustrate how it uh, affects wind turbines. So here I have the default offshore template in Ashes, and I just have, I'm just applying a load here, so it's this, this red vector here that you can see. And basically I'm pulling my wind turbine backwards, okay, so if I show you what, yeah, if, if I show you what we're looking at here, so this is the thrust force, so this is like the, the aerodynamic thrust, the, the total force that is pushing my wind turbine backwards. So it's the sum of all these blue vectors here. And this is the displacement of the hub, okay? So now you can see that the hub is moving backwards, and that is because of the thrust, and also because of the, okay, let, let me pause this, and also because of the, of the force that I'm, that I'm applying here. And I'm going to let go of this force at 20 seconds, this one, so it's going to disappear at 20 seconds. And then, as you can imagine, you know, if you pull something and then you release it, the wind turbine is going to start to, to oscillate. So this is what happens now. So we don't have the force anymore, and you can see that, that the, the wind turbine is starting to oscillate. The, the position is kind of going back and forth. So what is key here, and, and you know, what's, what's the reason for aerodynamic damping, is that you can see that when the wind turbine is moving into the wind, so that's what happens here when the slope is positive, then the thrust, there's like an, an, an additional thrust applied onto the onto the rotor. So you can see that you know around 21 seconds, that's when the the thrust is maximum, and then around 21 seconds is when the when the hub is moving into the wind the fastest. And then you know we reach the maximum. So here the the node is not the wind turbine is not moving much anymore, and that's when the the thrust force is kind of back to what it was. And then the wind turbine moves away from the wind, so you know now it's moving backwards in this direction. And then we get like the thrust is a bit lower than what it was before. And so that's what aerodynamic aerodynamic damping is, right? Is that when the wind turbine is moving into the wind, so when it's moving from, you know, from left to right on your screens, then I have a stronger thrust force, and that means that this increasing thrust force is opposing the motion, so it's effectively dampening out the motion. And you can see this very clearly, if I press play again, you can see that this uh, decays very quickly, we have like a, a strong damping here. And, and this is really cool, this is really important, because, you know, if you have so right now it was an artificial force that I was applying myself, but if you had like a, a big wave that starts exciting the, the tower of the wind turbine, then aerodynamic damping is going to help you dampen out the motion and it's going to reduce fatigue loads and fatigue damage. So now we're going to have a look at uh, yeah, another model. Let's see. So this model here now have two wind turbines. And so they're exactly the same, except that the controller is going to behave differently for, for the two of them. So here I have like the, the normal wind turbine in operation, and here I have a wind turbine where we enter emer emergency shutdown after five seconds. So you can see that, yeah, you can see how the blades are pitching and now the wind turbine is, is stopping. And uh, yeah, let me pause it for a sec. And here, so the, the red line is the... Um, the hub position, so just like before, is the position of the hub for this wind turbine, for the one that stopped, and the blue line is for the, for this one. Okay, and so we're gonna see how, and we're gonna we're doing the same thing. We're pulling the wind turbines backwards, except that I'm not showing the loads, and then we release we release them at 30 seconds. So if I press play at 30 seconds, when I release, you can see what's happening now, right? You can see that uh, again my wind turbines are kind of moving back and forth, and if I zoom in. Well, you can see that this one is moving a lot, so that's the, the red curve here. And the other one, oh, well, you, from the graph you see that it's uh, that the motion is getting dumped out really quickly. And and this is key, okay? So if you if you imagine that this wind turbine is is parked right now, what's happening is that with the blades being pitched to feather like they are now, there is very little thrust on the blades, so. As you saw before, that's kind of key for aerodynamic damping. So because we don't have thrust, we also don't have um, we, don't, we also don't have aerodynamic damping. And so that's very important because it means that the damage on this wind turbine 
the, the fatigue damage would be much larger than here. And that's also the case, so that's the case when the wind turbine is parked, but it could also be the case if, you know, if we talk about wave excitation, it would be the case if the waves were coming from a different direction, you know, so if I do this, for example, if the waves were coming 90 degrees, so we'd have the same issue. Cool, so that's a little bit about uh, aerodynamic damping. I hope that this made sense, this is quite key in... Uh, yeah, when you when you calculate damage equivalent loads for for wind turbines, and uh, yeah, as always, I mean, just don't hesitate to to let us know in the comments if you have any questions, and yeah, like and and subscribe if it makes sense. Cool. See you around.